welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> sounds good everything sounds good we are live on the air no we're not we're pre-recorded a-e-i-o-u la 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 what is up ladies and gentlemen welcome back to may streamants another week before the finals this is the last round of the semifinals between tlev horrors Josue and connor florida um, I'm your host, Anthony, and today with me is Rob and Will. Uh, Rob's first time debut on Maystream, it's in the semifinals. Um, pressure, it's pressure. Pressure is on. Uh, Will, of course, is a Maystream, it's veteran, so he knows what... He, he's the same with me, though. It's like it's always hard to make the decision at the end. Always. It always is, man. So today we got another great lineup for you guys. We have uh, Josue versus Connor. Now, Josue picked an interesting one uh to say the least uh one that i have a love for if you're a fan of the comic book community you would love this as well this property and that is marvel zombies but where he's doing it really shocked me and that is he wants to put this maze you know what i'll I'll let him i'll let him say it because i think I, i was pretty shocked when i found out where he wanted to put this but okay uh and then we have connor who is taking the 1980s cult classic Fright Night and bringing it to Horror Nights, a property that I know Murdy's probably been after for some time and a property that I would love to see come to the event. And uh, I'm excited to see what Connor has to bring to the table. So without further ado, let's get this show started uh, and start with Mr. Josue. Take it away, Josue. What is up guys from the Knights of Horror and everybody watching, uh, you know, thank you so much for, you know, voting me into round two and thank you to everybody who watched that video. Uh, Eddie, it was a pleasure uh, competing against you. Uh, and so now, Connor, it is a pleasure to go against you as well. Um, so today, what I've brought for you guys a little special it's a little special right so when this whole series started off and stuff like that you know Anthony talked to me about creating something you know mazes that we wish would come and happen at you know HHN knots and Queen Mary and stuff like that well what I bring to you today is something a little different something a little different but I think definitely on on the on the realm of I really wish it would happen. So what I have for you today is, and in case you've noticed the two monitors behind me, I've already spoiled it, I'm bringing you Marvel Zombies. <laughs> so for those of you who are not aware, uh, Marvel did actually create a whole series, uh, mini-series dedicated to zombies and a zombie virus and how it would affect the Marvel Universe. And because of that, I decided it would be super cool to have a maze dedicated to the Marvel Zombies. So, for my location of my maze, I have decided to place this in the Disneyland Resort. And I know what you're thinking, the Disneyland Resort? Bro, what? But hear me out, this is stuff we wish would happen, right? So, not only am I placing it in Disneyland, but I'm also placing it in Disney's California Adventure, in Avengers Campus, whenever that opens up. You know, so that it all flows together. So, my facade is going to be the Avengers Headquarter. That's right, the big facade that we have inside of Avengers Campus with the Quinjet on top. That will be the facade. And hopefully, whatever they'll do, they'll make an inside. Because the way I have this is, uh, the, the maze is now set up that it is, there is a line, there's like a pre-line before you enter the maze because the pre-line, or I guess, I guess the queue, is going to tell a story of what exactly is going on and how this comes to fruition. And so basically, we are invited by Stark Industries to their, basically they're testing out a new uh, project that Tony Stark has been working on to open dimensions in other worlds, you know? So, we, we, have, we as guests of Avengers Campus have been invited to come and check it out. 
So we start off in the line and on these big monitors that are kind of displaying, they're going to be telling us the story of where we're at so far. And basically, Tony Stark and the rest of the Avengers and Nick Fury are all there to check out Tony's creation. And he basically starts this machine that's supposed to open a doorway to another dimension and it doesn't work and it actually drains the power out of the facility. And the Avengers kind of laugh at Tony Stark and they're like, ah, I guess Tony Stark can't invent everything. And he walks, they all kind of walk off into their own uh, individual uh, places. Uh, then in walks Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange uh, warns Tony and Nick Fury that messing with other dimensions can be very dangerous and that they count themselves lucky that the machine didn't work. When suddenly the machine turns on and it goes crazy and there's this giant shake that happens and suddenly, and suddenly the machine turns on this bright blue vortex that opens up and from inside of the vortex they hear feed or something something like that something like hunger and Tony and Nick Fury rush towards the computer to see what's going on the computer now reads the mention that Earth 2149 has been accessed and locked into the portal. Tony's trying to figure out a way to stop this. And Doctor Strange, fearing for whatever is going to be coming out of that portal, decides to himself actually jump into 241, or 21, Earth 2149 and comes back and looks at both uh, Tony Stark and Nick Fury and tells them, we have to protect the guests that are inside of this facility right now. Let's go. So they all rush off, and before they go, Nick Fury tells a couple of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to stay there and protect any guests who walk into there. And that is the beginning of the maze, and now we are about to walk through Marvel Zombies, because right as they all leave, we see Zombie Captain America, Zombie Thor, Zombie Spider-Man, and the rest of the Zombie Avengers come out, and they are hungry, they are scary, and they all run off into their individual places. So now we're about to enter the facility, which is the Avengers headquarters. So now inside of the Avengers headquarters, um, my first room that I wanted to do is the machine, uh, the machine itself that we were just outside of when all this was going down. And the machine is going to be kind of still working, obviously, and that's where most of the actors will be funneling out. And the, the whole lab area that is set up is going to be in ruins and we'll have a few S.H.I.E.L.D. agents trying to tell you, come on guests, we gotta get you out of here, we gotta get you out of here. We'll hear over the intercom Tony Stark telling us that as guests we have to be careful because the, the facility is now overrun with zombies. So what's going to happen is from the portal, a couple of zombies, and it's always gonna be random uh, superheroes, whether it be Hawkeye, Black Widow, or something like that, they'll jump out and attack S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and come after you guys, so you'll run into the next room. The next room is actually a transition room, and most of this maze, well not most of the maze, but a good majority of this maze are going to be really cool transition rooms because we are in the Avengers headquarters, so I want these really cool kind of hallways that make you feel like you're in an Avengers, but like in an Avengers headquarters, but it's all kind of been destroyed. You've got late light fixtures, like kind of broken. Think of the queue of The Walking Dead at Universal, but like, you know, the entire maze kind of thing. That, that's what I'm thinking of. And every so often, you're going to have this really cool jump scare interaction where some of the, you know, Marvel zombies are trying to attack you. So I thought some ideas would be really cool is like a transition room that has uh, Captain America. So his shield is stuck in between uh, a door that's kind of pried open and zombie Captain America is coming from underneath trying to reach at you guys. Uh, another room I had that would be a really awesome transition would be two giant Hulk puppets, one obviously being a zombie Hulk coming out in between you and you have to kind of walk in between a screaming Hulk and a screaming zombie Hulk. I think that would be super cool to, be, to go through. A couple other transition rooms that we would have would be characters fighting their own characters respectively. So I'd love to see a zombie Captain America fighting a regular Captain America. I would love to see a zombie Thor going up against a regular Thor, you know. It would be really cool rooms where we would get to see these moments of zombies trying to attack the guests where we would get our scares, but also the superhero trying to protect us and get us out of the facility. The second room that I have uh, that will be somewhere in the uh, in this maze is actually dedicated to one of my favorite heroes, which is Spider-Man, of course. And it's actually this big kind of room where you walk in and uh, the lights go out in this room. They kind of flicker on and off and you'll hear kind of pitter-patters and stuff like that. And on the wall, 
you'll actually see a a scare actor holding onto the wall dressed up as a zombie spider-man and we'll have him hooked up so that when he looks at you guys he can jump off the wall and come swinging at you and luckily the actual spider-man will be there to shoot him with some webs to get him out of the way and get you guys out of that room another room i would love to have and i feel like every avenger would have their own room to show off their own individual power i would love to have some of the zombies come out at you only to be pushed back by Thor. I think like Thor's lightning or maybe just Thor swinging his hammer. I think that would be super cool. I would also love another room where the Hulk is maybe holding back zombie Hulk kind of in like this like really cool puppetry that we can do to have these two larger than life creatures fighting each other trying one trying to eat us and the other one trying to protect us from the zombie uh, Hulk eating us. So, for my money shot room, I thought, what better way, I mean, there's only one money shot room that I could really have, and it was having, entering this big room that, you know, I feel like this is something, if Disney were to get into horror, only Disney would be able to do something like this, it would be totally crazy, but essentially I would be having one side have the regular Marvel Avengers come in, and kind of being like, come on guests, we gotta get you out of here, and on the other side, the zombie Marvel Avengers would come in and they're obviously looking for for food there they're craving human flesh and it's essentially like that scene from Civil War where they're all fighting against each other both the Avengers and zombie Avengers would come together and collide within one another I think that would be super cool and obviously for good measure Captain America would throw in an Avengers assemble you know when we approach the final room we'll actually see that most of the zombies either have been beaten or are being thrown back into the portal and Captain America is obviously going to be there to congratulate us and be like you guys are super brave thank you for coming along with us and stuff like that something super like you know heroic and like I don't know it'd just be a cool concept to just see all the Avengers just being like hey man you did it you survived a zombie apocalypse thanks for coming out and then we get the final scare <laughs> so before the final scare uh, in that same final room, we'll actually have a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who will come up to Nick Fury and be like, Sir, uh, one of the subjects has escaped and we don't know where he is. And Nick Fury is like, oh, we gotta go. And so the final scare, which I feel like is only fitting, would be in an all dark room. Suddenly we see the, uh, like the portal, the, the, the portal that Doctor Strange creates. And you're thinking, oh, Doctor Strange is going to come out maybe to congratulate us. But nope, zombie Doctor Strange and maybe a few other zombies jump out of that portal for that final scare that will literally scare the living hell out of you because you think you're about to be greeted by another hero, but then you see another zombie come out at you. And then we get to exit into the rest of Avengers Campus. And yeah, that's that's pretty much the, uh, the maze I came up with for Marvel Zombies. Uh, some again, some of the scare actors that would be mentioned would obviously be all the Avengers cast, but in zombie form. And I really think this would be super cool to do this at California Adventure in Avengers Campus because not only would you during like during especially like during Halloween time, it would be such a cool maze that guests could go through. And I, I know what you're thinking, you know, putting a maze in Disneyland that's kind of weird. But one, I feel like California Adventure is one of the more not leaning towards adults but like still leaning towards adults because they saw alcohol there and I feel like it would just be a place fitting perfectly for a haunt like this and obviously it's Disney so like the production value would be super crazy but yeah that is the maze I'm bringing to you guys here how cool would it be to go through a Marvel Zombies maze thanks guys I'll check you guys later Damn. <laughs> After that moment of silence, I'm just like, damn. Um, that was the second time I ever watched that pitch, and wow. Good job, Josue. I appreciate that, man. That, uh, that sure is something I've thought about, uh, especially over time, because, of course, if you guys looked at the title or looked at the, one of the names down at the bottom of that book, uh, was Robert Kirkman creator of The Walking Dead, uh, actually wrote these comics for Marvel back in the day. Uh, even at one point, I believe, there was 
a Marvel Zombies Army of Darkness crossover. I think. I can't remember. But nonetheless, um, this was a dope concept for an idea. And I like how he's tying it into Avengers Campus, which is making it canon to the MCU. Um, it'd be cool if we actually got a lot of the actors to come back to reprise their roles for like those videos that you see in the, the beginning of that pre-show. Um, so I would be stoked for that. Uh, and I liked how, you know, you get to enter the Avengers campus. You're seeing the new kind of, uh, premiere of Tony Stark's latest gadget and it goes berserk. And then as you go through the maze, you're, you're pretty much going through parts of the, of the Avengers campus where the Marvel zombies are just everywhere, man. And I, I was liking a lot of the, especially the one scene where he says that he has like a zombie Hulk and a, and a giant Hulk puppet that pop out at you. That would scare the living hell out of me, because um, <laughs> you got two giant monster beasts like just in the and you're right in the middle of that fight. Uh, yeah, and I love that ending, of course, where you think everything's done and good, and then Doctor Strange portal opens up, and it's actually Zombie Doctor Strange, which I think is really cool. Um, well done, Josue. Well done, boys. Thoughts? You go ahead. Um, I mean, you said a lot of a lot of stuff I was going to touch on, but the one thing I wrote a couple of notes down, uh, the two Hulk thing, I think that would be uh, like a great kind of scare just because you could even do, um, you know, the, the, it's kind of like a trademark kind of thing where they the, both from both sides kind of get you in the middle. That's I when he said that, I was like, that's kind of like a perfect uh, like double double scare right there. Yeah. Um, and the this the imagery that i had in my mind of like captain america's shield like caught in a door and him like trying to get through i was like that that would be so cool like walking through a maze to see that um i really i really kind of like the just the, these little details that he's kind of like i mean you don't really you don't think about it but at, you know watching the movies and stuff you're like oh yeah like cap shield he does like use his shield to do stuff like that so it kind of just like you know those small little things where like okay that I, I see I see what you're doing there, um, and just how we, how we were saying like the hallways kind of like uh, how the, in The Walking Dead like the you know you have all the wires hanging down just a little more I I, I feel like that's um like good transition instead of it just being like oh you're walking down a hallway to the next room um you, you know you're giving su uh, people to stuff to look at as you're you know even though it's nothing crazy. It's still good uh, transitions, you know, as you're going down the hallway, you kind of see like, okay, we hear some wires and okay, you're, you're good. It's with the ambiance of what's going on. Um, and then also uh, the ending where he was talking about the, like the zombie Doctor Strange, I thought like that was so cool. Just like you see that glow and then it's not what you expect. Cause you know, you typically, you always kind of know there's a last scare, but to kind of trick you to think like, you know, with the previous kind of scene where it's like, oh, you know, all the zombies are getting pushed back in or, you know, they're dead. And then you're getting to leave and you think like, okay, yeah, like you're saying like, oh, okay, Strange is here, you know, that's cool. Like we're gonna see one last cool thing. And then it's like the last scare and that that would probably uh, put me on on the on my heels. So I, I thought that this is, I didn't think it was gonna work um especially in like he was saying california but then he, he started explaining why in california adventure and i was like oh yeah you know it kind of is more it's not like an adult place but there are themes for you know adults there and, and so i was like okay that kind of I, I could see i could this could work i think it could work so i, I think it's a uh, great job great job that was a crazy awesome pitch um i really like the uh placement of this uh this maze I think uh, it's a really smart idea to place that in um, Avengers Campus where you kind of already have the facade taken care of and maybe you could do some spooky like details on it, whatever, however they would go about that. But then just putting it in California Adventure unlocks this like crazy budget that I doubt any other park could even like begin to touch because it's, you know, Disney, of course. Um, and then that really allows for a lot of, um, a lot of uh, like, broadening of the ideas and I like how massive the scale of this maze was where it's like on a lot of mazes it feels very, very like tight and whatnot but this is just huge it just feels like a massive like um uh like story you know like it's uh there's just so much going on and it's not just about you but it's like there's uh there's a lot of like conflict going on around you and stuff like that 
And I really enjoyed the dynamic of, um, cause you know, in most mazes, it's like someone's like coming after you, whatever. But here it's like, there's a whole conflict going on that you just like happen to be right in the middle of. And I thought that was really awesome. And uh, of course, with a bunch of the big, you know, the two Hulk scare would be just insane to be super up close to. And, uh, you know, that money shot room would just be amazing. However, they could figure out how to do that. Um, and I have this vision in my mind for that last scare and he described it perfectly. I thought that was an amazing um, way to use the, uh, the dynamic of the both, you know, like the zombie superheroes and the superheroes. And yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, not much more can be said about that, man. That was just a, a good pitch, man. And I would be all for that. So the next one we're going to be looking at now is Connor, uh, who blew us away uh, last round with an original based around the alien scare zone from uh, HHN Orlando. Uh, Connor is going to be pitching us Fright Night from the 1980s uh, Tom Holland classic. So Connor, take it away, my friend. <laughs> Hey everybody, so I want to start off by saying thank you to the Knights of Horror crew for putting me through to round two. Um, it's an honor to have actually gotten a win in this competition. It feels pretty good. However, the one problem with me advancing is that unfortunately one of my very best friends, Mr. Zombie Chris, did not get to advance and he had an incredible pitch as well. However, it is not the end of May's treatments for Zombie Chris because I have enlisted his help for this treatment. Now, before anyone tries to come at me, I want it to be known that this has been cleared by Knights of Horror, this is allowed, and I'm also writing the treatment by myself. The treatment is my own. I'm basically just outsourcing the edit to Chris because that's what he does, you know, he's great at it. I'm not really an editor, it's just not really um, something I'm good at with the, the flashy edits make it really look good, as you could probably tell by my last treatment. So I thought maybe, first of all, that Zombie Chris deserves to still be providing some creative energy to this competition. And B, I think it would overall make my product a little better. So with that being said, we are going to be treating 1985's Fright Night. Now this is one of my top three favorite horror films of all time. I love this movie and it's definitely at the top of my list of IPs that Horror Nights has not yet done. So that is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to treat this for the new parade building which last year was the home of Universal Monsters. And right off the bat, we're going to use a similar tactic that Universal Monsters used. So on the outside of the parade building, you will see basically the, the vampire face from the iconic 1985 poster for Fright Night. Now, obviously, if you're a horror fan, chances are that you recognize this. It's a very, very recognizable image. Uh, and during the day, you'll still be able to see it because it'll be basically printed onto the side like the Monsters one. And at night, they will use projections to kind of make it look like it's animated and moving a little bit. So when you walk into the parade building, the first thing you'll see is Charlie Brewster's house. And of course, you will see his car outside as well, um, his very poorly painted car. Now, as you're walking up to the house, you will see in the upper window where Charlie's room is, you will see a light from a TV on. And you will hear him saying that I'm Peter Vincent and well, welcome to Fright Night. So you're kind of getting Peter Vincent established early and you pretty much have to have that audio cue in this house. I mean, it is completely iconic. So when you walk into the Brewster's living room, you will see Charlie's mother on the left and Charlie on the right by the staircase. And there'll be another chair in the room and uh, you will see another audio trigger will go off and you will see that the other person is Jerry Dandridge, the main antagonist of the film the vampire next door. So at this point, he will clarify that he has been invited in, which anyone who knows anything about vampires knows. That means he is free to come in whenever he wants. This will also kind of help people who maybe haven't seen the film kind of get an idea of what they're walking into. It's kind of a an exposition scene, you know, um, not necessarily a scare right off the bat here, but you're kind of getting exposition that this is going to be the start of the action. Now Jerry is allowed in Charlie's personal space. And that is when you'll transition into Charlie's room, which he is of course decked out with anti-vampire materials such as garlic. And yes, this room will smell heavily of garlic as Horror Nights likes to do. And here you will see the confrontation, the first confrontation between the two of them. Uh, you'll hear the audio trigger 
of Jerry telling Charlie that you will need faith for the crucifix to work. He'll pop out from behind the corner and you will see him in his disgusting vampire glory, pretty much. So from here, we will move on to Peter Vincent's apartment. Now, Peter Vincent has been loosely established early in the maze, but this is when you're gonna kind of see him more in action. Uh, the first room, you will see Charlie's girlfriend, Amy. And again, this is another kind of one of those exposition type scenes where you're gonna get established that Peter Vincent is a vampire hunter and the two of them basically need his help. So you will leave the apartment, but not for long because you're then going to go into the alleyway where Jerry turns Ed into a vampire. Now, you'll see this transformation. You'll see Jerry stick his hand out at you every now and then. And then you'll turn around the corner and Ed will pop out in his new vampire form. So following this, you will re-enter Peter Vincent's apartment. And this is when you will see Ed attack Peter Vincent um, as a vampire now. And at the end of the prior scene, you'll see uh, Peter Vincent press the crucifix onto the head of Evil Ed. And now you will see the X burned onto his forehead. So after this will be the nightclub scene. Now, this is where you're going to see a lot of victims being cast. Uh, it's going to be a huge open room with uh, a lot of actors and they'll all be panicking because at the top of the staircase in the back right corner of the room you will see jerry getting a kill pretty much uh, so you'll walk through this huge open room which is just going to be an amazing scene a, a real showstopper and you'll come around the corner for one more scare from jerry in this sequence so after this you'll come to a second big facade and this will be the dandridge house you'll see fog rolling it off the balcony uh, to really set the atmosphere and this is where things are going to get a little bit intense so the first thing you'll see at the top of the staircase jerry as well as peter and charlie lower on the staircase and peter will point the crucifix at jerry luckily peter has faith in it so you will see jerry go away but then you will get scared by Billy, which is basically Jerry's vampire assistant. He'll come around the corner, he'll give you a little scare, and throughout Jerry's house you'll see all kinds of iconic moments. Uh, you'll see, of course, the vampire bat that he turns into. You'll see Billy as like an undead creature that they have to kill. So you'll get those scares, of course, and then you'll also see what is basically werewolf Ed. Uh, you know, you can use a wolf puppet that Peter Vincent has to kill. Unfortunately, this does not happen in Jerry's house in the film. It would be not very comprehensive, so we're just going to kind of keep that all in one place uh, just for the sake of the flow of the maze. And then, of course, you will see the basement scene. You see Amy, who is now transformed into a vampire and obviously is quite terrifying. So in this basement, uh, you'll get scares from her. You'll get scares from Jerry as well, who is currently in his grotesque vampire form as well. Finally, you'll turn the corner into the next part of the basement, which has now been smashed open in a way. Uh, they've broken the blackout windows and there's light pouring through. So you'll see Jerry in immense pain at this point. So then you'll come to the last couple of moments here. Um, if you remember in the Ghostbusters maze, uh, the, it, it kind of ends similarly to that. Um, you'll see, of course, the Ghostbuster... Uh, and he's saying, you know, we came, we saw you kicked his ass, except that this time it's going to be Charlie now with Amy back in her normal human form. Uh, they'll be on the ground. He'll be holding her. It'll be a nice little moment. And you think that's kind of a nice little end of the maze until you turn the, the final corner to head out. And there's a stinger scare from Evil Ed saying, Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> you, you absolutely have to. You, it's just, It's just a great way to end the film and it has to be the way to end the maze as well. So yeah, like I said, uh, this would be a dream come true for me. Kind of tougher to treat in a way. Uh, the, the scenes are very, very good for a haunted house, but just in terms of continuity, it can be a little difficult, but no matter what, I would love to see it. And I'm sure Universal Creative could do it so much better than me. Uh, there's a reason I don't work for them, but yeah, this is what I've got. I'm happy to have gotten to at least get to this point to pitch it because these were the two mazes that I really wanted to put out there into the universe because I've now done the original that I would want the most and the IP that I would want the most. So thank you for listening. I've been Connor FL. So yeah, thank you. Welcome to...
to Fright Night. Connor, you bastard. Why do you do this? To <laughs> the hell, man? I hate it. It's going to be even worse in the finals because I don't know who to pick. I don't even know who to pick right now because there were such great pitches. I mean, okay, let's talk about Connor's now. Connor brought a property that I've been wanting to come to the event for some time now, whether it be the remake or the original. I prefer the original because the original, in my opinion, is a little bit better. I'm not saying the remake was trash. The remake was actually really well put together. But that original, of course, you can never can beat the original. Um, so what he did with this maze and this treatment was like everything I would love to see in this maze. Um, you know, you had your, you, you had the iconic vampires. You, you, you know, you, you touched up on, you know, the confrontation of when Jerry and Charlie meet in the very beginning, which is awesome. We get to see his car. We get to see the house as a facade. Um, I'm loving the outside uh, that you had too, where you know you had. Uh, a picture of the iconic cover of the film with the moving clouds going across it. I don't know if you guys caught that, but that was really dope. Um, so, and I and I know what he's talking about because Universal Monsters in 2018 did the same exact thing where they had like moving clouds go across the the big painting of it, projections on that wall. So, I'm all for that. Uh, I do love uh, Evil. I mean, I love that version in the 1985 film of Evil than I did in the 2011 reboot. Um, I feel like evil in this movie was like a lot more funnier and just kind of out there and, and really funny and cool. And uh, I like the way that evil was portrayed in this, but um, I don't know, man. I think everything about this to the, all the way up to the final confrontation and, and, um, and uh, Jerry's house is going to be really dope. Um, also, it's, it's one of those things too, where it's just like, uh, you know, I'm hoping going right in. The first thing that you hear is uh, uh, Jerry saying, welcome to fright night. But the way he says it, is so like iconic like you heard it in the trailer at the end which was really cool um and i'm gonna give you even fucking more praise because you brought in zombie chris to help you out with this so that was really cool um but connor great work man uh you make me really want to see this especially that ending that last scene of of evil coming out saying his iconic line that was hilarious so uh boys what do you guys think uh man Oh, what a what a pitch um making this one difficult uh dude your vision for this whole property and like the the picking of the ip i thought was excellent i've never seen this movie before but now i really want to see it you really sold me on it and um it just looks like it would fit um so like perfectly at an event like horror nights and um, I, I loved all the rooms like you proposed with like the werewolf puppets. Like that looked like it could be, it could make for some serious scares. Like those were some scary goddamn werewolves. And, uh, and just, I think the whole, like uh, the concept and you had the multiple sides with the, you know, the fog rolling off the balcony and whatnot. And uh, I think, it, I think this would work phenomenally as a maze. And uh, also Chris, your edits are great on this i love that trailer too at the very end uh great pitch okay so i'm gonna say that i think this would be like a perfect maze to to come to any haunt um and the way he explained like the facade with like the the house and the and the clouds i mean if you like if you've seen the cover you know what it is it's like a legendary kind of kind of picture so i think that's amazing um and just also i like uh i like storytelling and i feel like what the way uh he pitched this maze there you're gonna get some scares but you're gonna get that little bit of storytelling uh at the beginning to kind of let you know what's going on for those for people who ha maybe haven't seen uh who haven't seen the movie you can you can uh, get a little bit of story where, so you won't go into it kind of completely like blind. Um, and also the, uh, the, the nightclub scene that he was talking about, I feel like that could be um, probably done right. I feel like it could be 
a great uh just overall room to walk through and and just you know with the you could do you know lighting and just different elements you know in the environment i for me that kind of like stood out the most out of all this means i was like i feel like this would be like a, a room you would be like hey you know that the nightclub you know room you walk through so that that was another thing um and also back in the house as far as like in the basement and stuff you know like uh you can use a lot of scares with the uh you know the the um like the werewolf and and just you know there's just different scenes like you know where he has the like this the the pole or the stake like kind of stuck in him i could see that being like it like Oh, not only a scary scene, but a kind of a little bit of a funny scene to walk through. Um, and then, you know, the last, the last scare that's, you know, kind of like it's scary, but it also funny that, you know, just to kind of get you before you, before you leave. But um, overall, I think this would be a perfect maze uh, to come to an event. So, I mean, I, I, this, this is awesome. It's, it's going to be hard to choose because they're both awesome. I mean, yeah. Man. So I guess now is the final decision. Who's going to the finals, man? Uh, who's going to go up against Hotline in the finals? Uh, uh, and this is this is the part, and I, and I want to just, I can't stress this enough. If we don't pick you, it's not that we didn't like your maze. It's just it has to come down to one person. Uh, and it's really hard for me to decide because, yes, on one hand, I would love to see Marvel Zombies at the Avengers Campus. I think that is a fucking phenomenal idea. But on the other hand, I've been waiting for Fright Night to come to Horror Nights for years. Like, years. I, I Like, every year I'm hoping that this is one of the properties that Murdy can land and bring to life. Uh, <sighs> Will, who do you think going, who do you think's going to the finals? <laughs> Um, let's see. You know, I think I might have to give this one to Connor. Um, I loved Hostway's ideas, but I just, I don't know why, but it just seemed like a more cohesive idea for a maze to me. Uh, Connor's idea. And, uh, yeah, I have to give it to him. That's already one vote in, man. Rob, who are you going for? <laughs> um, all right, let me say this. Uh, Josue, like, I mean. So he's voting the... for Connor. No, maybe. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? All right, let me, let me say this. Connor, the, the idea, like, this is, a, like I said, this is a perfect maze to come, like, to HHN, an event like that. And, and just the, I, because I've seen the movie, I picture these these scenes and so it just it kind of like hits me and but who wouldn't like who doesn't want to see a different kind of like i i almost say like a mole like a multi different dimension of your mar your favorite marvel characters i mean if both these mazes are awesome and but you know kind of along the lines with you anthony is i i've also wanted to see fright night brought to horror nights for a while because it is an iconic horror movie for me. So I'm going to go with, with Connor. Sorry, it goes away. Doesn't matter who I pick at this point. We already have a winner, but I'm going to give you my opinion anyway. I have faith that in the next five or 10 years, I know that's a while, but uh, Fright Night will probably be coming to the event. So that's a more realistic property that can come to the event. Uh, and I, and I really want to see this, but Marvel zombies may never come at all. And that is something I deeply want to see. So even though my vote at this point doesn't count, I'm going to vote for Josue just because the thought of tying in and bringing the Marvel zombies into the MCU and tying that into the canon of the MCU with Avengers Campus is just an extraordinary idea. But uh, I, I, I ha I, it was a hard decision. I mean, I, I really want to see Fright Night, and I have more faith that that will come over Marvel Zombies any day. Um, but I, I had to go with Marvel Zombies because that's the more unrealistic one that will probably never come. But Connor, congratulations. You are going to the finals of Maze Treatments uh, against Hauntline. Wow. Uh, this is kind of a, this is a great uh, accomplishment for Connor. 
But I do. Kind of, I feel kind of bad for the TLEV team, man, because this was the show that they inspired, and they couldn't make it to the finals, man. I mean, kind of a bummer, but at the same time, it is what it is, you know. I mean, I'm I'm excited for Connor though, man. Connor, honestly, for me, Connor was the underdog of the event. Like I had a feeling he was gonna shock us. Uh, he did great storytelling with the aliens original maze from uh, Orlando, which I thought like I was like. I'd never even been in that scare zone. I want to see that. Uh, his detail to Fright Night was beautiful. I mean, he I think he did justice to this, and I can't. And I would love to see this at the event one day. Um, and then let's talk about Josue, man. I mean, Josue, you know, for the first round gave us Coraline, which works so perfectly at Not Scary Farm. And then the next the next round he gives us Marvel Zombies, which undoubtedly would probably be a dream for all comic book and horror fans. Um, Josue, I do apologize, my friend. Uh, thank you for playing, man. I, I really did enjoy seeing what you brought to the table. And uh, again, thanks to all the boys at TLEV for giving us the inspiration to making this show. Um, without you guys, uh, I don't think the idea would uh, float to my head. But next week is where they are. Not next week, but in two weeks. I'm giving them a bye week so they can create their next maze. In two weeks is the season finale of maze treatments. We got Jonathan from the hotline who's given us the matrix who's given us terminator mazes. You probably would have never thought in a million years would work at horror nights, but he somehow made them work. What is he going to give us in the finals? I don't even know yet. And I'm not just saying that I really don't know what he's given us. None of my crew knows nothing. So we got John, John from the hotline. Versus Connor, who's given us an original, an IP. How is he going to finish this off in the finals? We shall see. Will he finally dethrone Hauntline? We shall see. Congratulations to you both, gentlemen. We will see you in two weeks at the finals, the season finale of May Treatments. It's been a long time coming. We've enjoyed doing every one of these May Treatments. We've enjoyed watching all of your May Treatments. All of them have been phenomenal. I wish I could vote for you guys all. But in the end, it has to come down to one winner. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Hope you guys enjoy this episode of those Maze Treatments. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video, follow us on all of our social medias. Check out our merch shop. We love each and every one of you. We'll see you guys soon.